In this video, I'm going to be showing you the process that I use to create a high quality solder stencil uh, by laser cutting a four mil thick uh, piece of a sheet of mylar. Uh, I want to go through the whole process um, and show you kind of start to finish um, how I do this. So I'm starting in KiCad with uh, the PCB layout. And the first step of the process is going to be to plot the edge cuts layer and the F paste layer, the front paste layer. So we're going to uncheck all of these, leave the edge cuts, and we're going to select the front paste layer. And we want to output SVG. And those all look appropriate. So we're going to plot these. And these live in the Flasher Gerber directory. Okay. So I want to put those in a different folder. Good. Flasher one. Errors. Okay, so my two SVG files are there. And there, so we're going to copy those over here. And we can close down KiCad. And just to show you what these files look like, I'm going to open them up in uh, Inkscape. So the edge cuts layer. First of all, it's going to be plotted on something like an A4 size sheet of paper, which is not the size of um, either the stencil sheet that I'm going to be cutting in or the, uh, the what I'm calling the frame, which is going to be cut out of 60 mil thick uh, chipboard. So here's the edge cuts layer for this board. It's just a little rectangle somewhere in the middle of this large uh, page. And then the front paste layer is positioned similarly to the edge cuts layer, as you might imagine, in this rather large uh, A4 size sheet of paper. And if we zoom in, you can see these are all sort of filled in uh, rectangles or rounded rectangles for the pads. Um, so some tutorials online will suggest that you should uh, ungroup everything and uh, shrink these pads by uh, something like 80% about their centers as individual objects. And that turns out not to be the quite the right thing you want to do. You, you really want to uh, offset each of these um, outlines by um, half the, well, by the, by half of the width of the laser beam uh, to account for the curve of the beam uh, so that when the beam cuts the stencil, you get back to the size of the pads. Um, and so by trial and error, I sort of figured out that that's about uh, 75 microns or so for the, the K40 laser that I have here. Um, you have to have a CO2 laser. A, a, a blue uh, laser diode uh, just doesn't cut the mylar very well, if at all. Um, and uh, it turns out you can offset pads in KiCad, I'm sorry, in Inkscape, but you can only do them one at a time. And it's it's uh, not something you'd want to do uh, on all the pads of a, especially a large board. This one, it wouldn't be so bad to do them all individually, but it, it would be a royal pain to do, to do it for a more complicated board. So uh, what I've done is I've written a Python script um, and there'll be a link to a GitHub repository where you can get the script if you want. That basically uses the edge cuts layer and uh, the uh, front paste layer and basically produces uh, two more SVG files, one for the frame and one for the uh, stencil um, that basically does all the path offsetting and um, and changes the, these all from fill to outline and just gets it ready to um, be loaded into K40 Whisper and cut um, on the laser cutter. So 
Um, I'm going to show you that. So uh, here I have this Python script called make stencil pi and I made it executable here. Um, and you can go help to see all the various options you have. So um, you basically have to supply the project name, which in this case is the flasher prefix that you can see over here for these file names. And then you can set these various parameters. So you can change um, the offset uh, for the frame so it outsets the edge cuts layer by about a millimeter by default for the frame to give a little bit of clearance between the frame and the board. So when you lift the, the stencil off the board, you don't move the board. Um, it allows you to change the width and the height of the frame and the width and the height of the stencil and the amount by which you offset the pads in the front paste layer to account for the curve of the laser beam. So we're just going to take the defaults here and I'm going to um, do flasher and that creates over here two new SVG files, one for the frame and one for the stencil. I'll open up the frame so you can see what that looks like. Come on. There we go. So there's the frame. I'm going to cut this out of a 4 inch by 6 inch piece of uh, this 60 mil thick uh, chipboard. And um, the blue is what's going to be cut out, and the black is the original edge cut slayer, which has now been offset by one millimeter to get the cut for the frame, and it's been centered. Uh, in the middle of this four inch by six inch um, sheet. The stencil looks like this. And so you can see that these pads are slightly smaller than they were before, um, which is um, to account for the, the width of the laser beam. And the whole thing sits in a four inch by four inch sheet here. Okay, so I'm gonna fire up the laser cutter. It's gonna get a little noisy. And we will launch uh, K40 Whisper. a laser cutter and to, to cut the frame I'm going to use a uh, vector engrave at 10, mil 10 uh, millimeters per second and I'm going to set the power level which is on my K40 a percentage to 15% board here after I open up the frame design file. So it's on the desktop. Here's the frame. And I want to reposition this.
Okay, that looks pretty reasonable. And so we're going to cut this. Now for the actual stencil, we're going to open up the stencil file. But in order to do this, um, we're going to uh, basically sandwich the 4 mil thick mylar sheet between two pieces of uh, 20 pound printer paper that have been soaked with a spray bottle with water. And so um, I'm going to show you how that goes. Okay, so I've got a four inch sheet here of um, this ordinary printer paper. And I've got a spray bottle, and I'm just going to spray both sides, getting it nice and wet. And then I'm going to line up four mil thick sheet of mylar on this and then I've got a second piece of printer paper. You want to get this nice and wet. This idea is due to um, a very good tutorial video which I'll include a link to in the description of this video down below. But the water really keeps the uh, the laser from melting and causing the uh, ca melting the mylar and causing the mylar to kind of buckle, so it gets a very very nice flat, very nice clean cut. So now we're going to line up the mylar. To make sure that that is reasonably well lined up. Okay. Now we're going to change the power level to. Uh, 9.2% and vector engrave at the 10 at the same 10 millimeters per second. Okay, now uh, we can just get rid of the paper. And probably just go rinse this off in the sink, but you can see we got... It's a little hard to see. We've got a very nice, clean, laser-cut stencil here. So I'm going to go rinse this off and, uh, and dry it off and I'll show you um, what it looks like with the board underneath it, uh, just so you can see how uh, nice it is, nice and clean it is. Be right back. 
All right, now we're going to assemble the stencil. And um, the idea here of the frame is to provide uh, a nearly level surface for um, the stencil to uh, sit on top of. Uh, and also, um, the Mylar stencil is a lot more flexible than, let's say, a stainless steel stencil would be. So when you lift it off, in order to lift it off cleanly, the idea is that the frame will support uh, the stencil as it comes off uh, from the board as we lift it off. And so uh, that's an important piece uh, to getting a, a good print with these um, when you're using um, like a plastic film. So uh, I have here um, a couple of neodymium magnets holding the frame down. Sometimes the chipboard can uh, be warped a little bit, so that helps to keep it nice and level. And we just line up the stencil with the board, like so. You can see the pads line up really quite nicely. And then what we do is we take a piece of scotch tape, and we'll tape it down on each end. Like so. And then we'll apply some solder paste on a spreader and then we'll just lift the stencil off the board like that. So this, this turns out to be a really nice uh, stencil making technique. Um, I, I claimed that it was uh, low cost. The cost of the chipboard, um, which comes pre-cut to this size of 4 inches by 6 inches, is about uh, 42 cents if you buy 100 of them. And I'll leave a link below to the source of my materials. If you work out the cost of the 4 mil thick mylar sheets for a 4 inch by 4 inch stencil, um, which I had to cut down from a 12 inch by 17 and a half inch uh, size with a paper cutter. Uh, it works out to be about six cents for uh, the four, four inch by four inch stencil. And uh, that's a very convenient size because most of the inexpensive fab houses have a maximum board size of about 100 millimeters by 100 millimeters, which is just under four inches by four inches. So this is a nice size to work with. And the total cost for the materials for the stencil is around maybe 48 or 50 cents at the time of uh, producing this video. Um, as a teaser, um, I've also had some really good luck um, with this same exact technique um, for cutting stencils for things that are uh, much harder than the 0603s, 0805s, and SOT23 packages. Um, this is a board uh, a microcontroller dev board uh, that involves a USB Type-C connector, a QFN, this is an RP2040, uh, which has a 400 uh, micron or 4.4 millimeter pad pitch. Um, and you can see that um, the stencil is uh, looks very promising. I haven't had a chance to assemble the board yet with a stencil, uh, this stencil that I cut but uh, you can see that the windows for the pads around the microcontroller and the pads on the USB-C connector, which have a 0.5 millimeter pitch, are uh, distinct, and there's mylar between them. And so I'm looking forward to giving that a try in the near future, so stay tuned. Uh, that's it for this. Thanks for watching.